my name is dr pc padel professor and chief soil health specialist on agriculture university and parul university and mati mati agro mart private limited on gujarat so the today the topic is that control of wind erosion improves soil fertility so did you know it takes 200 to 500 years to make one inch of top soil so in temperate climate it can take 1000 year to create a inch wide layer of soil but it could take as little as 500 year in rainy tropical climate to create the same thing means in india it is located in a tropical climate to make soil fertile, fertile enough it can take 1000 of year to acquire mineral from parent soil rock organic matter etc so two type of soil erosion one water erosion during heavy rains water removes a lot of soil rain drop fall within approximate speed of 10 meters per second and wash away the top soil so when the rainfall intensity is greater then the fertile soil has been washed out then wind erosion wind erosion is a worldwide problem that occurs when strong wind blow across dry soil on unprotected surfaces wind detaches soil particles from the surface now we'll talk the length for wind erosion so conjure the soil save the earth so wind erosion is more in sandy soil than flat soil so wind erosion is most often seen in flat bare areas where there is not an enough natural vegetation to hold the soil in place or if the land has been cultivated and therefore we should not have the cultivated land frequently and you know that the no tillage or minimum tillage is advantageous over continuous cultivation of the land dry and sandy soils are increasingly susceptible along with each region where soil may be loose so you can see here severe weather damaging wind types so when there is a wind blowing the upper fertile soil has been washed out then uh, same sand dunes in jaisalmer in rajasthan jaisalmer same and same sand dunes so people are visiting it is a tourist place at jaisalmer so you can find a sand dunes due to winds so reduce wind erosion for long term profitability so soil loss via wind erosion cuts your profit and reduce productivity by removing a non renewable crop production resource erosion is very costly because the nutrient it removes must be replaced because you know that when the nutrients has been lost to the wind then we have to reap air the nutrient to manure and fertilizer so the cost of cultivation is increasing and we are not getting more profit plus it reduces the depth of productive soil lowering the water holding capacity by controlling wind erosion you will inevitably control water erosion as well so we have to control the intro erosion then wind erosion so you can see gif the wind is blowing soil erosion by wind has caused an accumulation of eroded particle in loss a type of soil which make up some of the world most fertile and productive region soil condition conducive to wind erosion are most commonly found in arid and semi arid areas where rainfall is insufficient and no vegetative cover on the land so in rajasthan area in kutch area and in problematic soil alkaline soil there will be more there will be no vegetation on the soil so there will be more chances of the wind erosion particularly rajasthan kutch area and some part of the madhya pradesh the most serious damage caused by wind erosion is the change in soil texture since the finer soil particles are subject to movement by wind 
So you know that uh, clay particle is a finer particle and it is lighter in weight. So it has been most out. And clay particle is activity active one and the soil fertility depend upon the clay particle. So wind erosion gradually removes silt, clay and organic matter from the top soil, leaving the coarse soil material. So silt, then clay and organic matter has been washed out due to wind. So the soil remains coarse soil and it is infertile soil. Then wind erode the soil in three steps. Saltation. So we can see saltation means it is a process of soil movement in a series of bounces or jumps. Soil particle having size ranges from 0.05 to 0.5 mm generally move in this process. So you can see here the particles are detached from the soil. So saltation movement is caused by the pressure of the wind on the soil particle and collision of a particle with other particles. The height of the jump varies with the size and density of the soil particle, the roughness of the soil surface and velocity of the wind. So, saltation. Then suspension and then creep. So, suspension, you can see here, suspension represents the floating of small particle in the air stream, like clay particle and organic matter and silk particle. So, movement of such fine particles in suspension is usually started by impact of particle in saltation. So, first saltation starts, then the finer particle has been joined in the air streams. So, when these fine particles are picked up by the particle in saltation and enter the turbulent air layers, then they can lift it up in the air and they are often carried for several miles before being Redeploying as well. So, dust particles will fall on the surface only when the wind subsides or the rain was them down. Then, surface creep. So, it is a surface creep. So, surface creep is the rolling or sliding of large particles along the ground surface. So, large particles on the ground surface sliding or rolling. They are too heavy to be lifted by wind and are moved primarily by impact of the particles in saltation rather than by direct force of the wind. The force particles tend to move closer to the ground than the fine ones. So, effect of vegetation in minimizing erosion. So, we, we know that when uh, vegetation is there, then it absorbs the energy of falling rain. So, rainfall fall on the canopy of the tree and so uh, ground cover protect the soil, vegetation help to maintain absorptive capacity, slow the wind's velocity of the runoff and act as a filter to catch sediment. Then grass root protect surface soil. Then deep, deep roots help hold and stabilize bank material ties soil layer together. A new operation from foliage remove water from soil and shrub root hold surface soil. Then impact of erosion on crop yield. Erosion reduces the capacity of the soil to hold water to severe water stress. Erosion con contributes to losses of plant nutrients which was away with the soil particles. I told that clay particle organic um, organic particles, organic matter, then silt. Because the subsoil generally contain fewer nutrients than topsoil. So, poor particles, poor soil, more fertilizer needed to maintain crop yield. So, for increasing the crop productivity, we have to add more fertilizers because the active particle, clay particle, and uh, organic particle has been washed out. This in turn increases productive production cost. Moreover, the addition of fertilizer alone cannot compensate for all the nutrient loss when top soil erodes. Erosion reduces yield by degrading soil structure, increasing soil erodibility, surface sealing. Then crusting. So you can see here, surface crust, then the root growth is poor. When this soil is porous, loose, then better growth of the root. 
So water is built as a reduce in a crustling soil. And seedling have a harder time breaking through the soil crust. Erosion reduces the productivity because it does not remove top uniformly over the surface of the steel. Typically, a part of the erosion field still have several inches of top left, other part may be eroded down with top soil. Then base management practices that are used to control erosion factors of both wind and water are crop rotation. So you have to take the crop rotation, improve the overall efficiency of nitrogen uptake and utilization in the soil. If certain covers are planted in, in the winter, erosion and runoff is prevented when the ground throws and nutrients are trapped into the soil and related to the spring crops. So in crop rotation, don't grow cereal and cereal, but you take cereal, then legume, then pulses and so on. Then contour cultivation, so you can see here the contour cultivation on generally sloping land. So it is a sloping land, a special tillage practice carried out on the contour of the field can reduce the velocity of the overload flow. Contour cultivation should not be carried out on steep slope because it will may merely make the erosion situation worse. So contour cultivation, then steep cropping. So you can see the strip, we have to grow this different type of the crop or the stripes on the field. So the technique in which alternate strip of different crops are planted, like wheat, then uh, pulses and so on. So there are three main types, contour strip cropping, hill strip cropping and buffer strip cropping. If the strip are planted along the contour, water damage can be minimized in dry region. If the strips are planted crosswise to contour, wind damage is also minimized. <coughs> then, four, add a cover crop after a short season crop. So, leave residue standing to control wind erosion. So, when there is a crop residue, then there will be minimize the wind and there will be less chances of the soil erosion. Then constable is used as cover for winter with seedling. So you can see that uh, naked soil, don't keep the naked soil, but we have to cover the soil with the crop residue or leaf residue or constables. So this is an excellent way to protect the soil through the winter and early spring weather. Rye grass is fairly extensive, inexpensive, easy to grow, and provide excellent covers, storage from wind and water erosion. So we can grow the rye grass. So it, it is a best cover crop to reduce the wind erosion. Then fifth one, crop leave residue standing. This is an effective way to slow down wind speed. For example, raise the cutting height for small grains. Also, if chopping residue leave alternative strips of an unchopped stalks. Then crop residue is still the best erosion prevention tool. So, what is the advantage? So, it reduced detachment, hinders overland flow, improve infiltration. Then rotation maintains soil structure. So soil structure can be maintained by the crop residue management. Then organic farming, farming control wind erosion over conventional farming. So both scientists have flaming and it covered in 1997. And another scientist, uh, Sigrist, and it covered in 1998. Both have done the work on organic farming control over the conventional farming. But they have concluded that organic farming alone cannot be used effectively to control erosion and that both farming systems require additional conservation measures such as winter cover crop and residue mulching to sufficiently prevent soil loss for row crop cultivation. Then terrace, so you can see here in GIF, it is a terrace system. Here you can see rice terrace in Sikkim in India. So rice cultivation has been carried out 
interests. So constructing bench-like channels is otherwise known as terrace enables water to be stored temporarily on slope to allow sediment deposition and water infiltration. So you can see then terrace, there are three types of terrace, bench terrace, contour terrace, parallel terrace. So it is a bench terrace, then it is a contour terrace, then it is a parallel terrace. So it will control erosion in wetter area by reducing the length of the slope. So by terracing, we can reduce the length of the slope. Then wind breaks, shelter belts, various form by trees and plants with many leaves to control the wind velocity. So it control the wind velocity. So wind breaks and shelter belts. So you can see here. Wind breaks, we are also in wind breaks on the boundary of the tree. So there will be a less wind erosion because it works as a barrier. <coughs> then uh, wind breaks are linear planting of tree shrubs designed to protect crop from damage caused by strong wind. So wind break help reduce soil erosion and increase crop yield. So, do you want to increase your crop yield by 10 to 15 percent? Plant a windbreak. So, it improves the soil health. So, farmer sowing their paddy and poplar tree based agroforestry at Haryana and India. So, the importance of the agroforestry to reduce the damage of the strong wind. Then, for it, uh, the highest tree cover per hectare was found in Anam, where there, there were 66 trees per hectare. So it is the highest in India. And uh, it is you are surprising that uh, in uh, Anam and Kerala district, there is uh, no any forest area. But the farmers are wise and they, they are themselves grow the trees on the boundary of the trees. And they, are, they have the sandy loam soil. So they protect the soil fertility by growing the agroforestry. So you can see the, I have taken the photos from the satellite, Anam and Kela. You can see the trees, green trees on the boundary of the tree. They are taking the uh, tobacco crop, potato crop, banana crop, all the crops have been grown here. So the soil is alluvial, sandy loop type of soil, 100% uh, sure irrigation facility, underground water quality is also better. So popular based agroforestry way out to meet environmental challenge and improving the financial status of farmers in Northwest India. So you can here see that indicating, indicating popular uh, based agroforestry and dairy farming. Agroforestry system is popular between maize crops. So you can see here the maize crops. Then check dams. A steel check dam, you can see here. Then concrete check dam. Then grass waterways. So you can see here grass waterway. So the, what is the purpose of the grass waterway? The, they force from runoff water to flow down the center of an established grass strip and can carry very large quantities of storm water across a field without erosion. Grass water ways are also used as a filtered wood to remove sediment. To prevent this, it is important that crops, residue, buffer strip and other erosion control practices or structure be used along with grass water way for maximum effectiveness and for maximum benefits. Then diversion structures. So it is a divergent structure, drop structure. So these are channels that are constructed across slope that are cause water to flow to a desired outlet. They are similar to grass waterways and are used most often for gully control. Then drop structure are small dams used to stabilize steep waterways and other channels. They can handle large amount of runoff water and are effective where falls are less than 2.5 meters. The riparian zone is a transitional area between the land and river or stream. 
the zones are important in ecology environmental management and civil engineering as they have critical role in plant biodiversity and soil management among others so you can see here then riparian stripes these are merely buffer stripes of grass strawberry plant and other vegetation that grow on the bank of river <coughs> so you can see here the trees are grown on the bank of the river and streams water conservation problem the streams flow run up and catchment sediment in shallow water flow they can reduce sediment and the nutrient <coughs> and herbicide attach to it by 30 to 50 percent then no till planting so we have seen that no till planting is better and uh, it maintains the soil structures soil aggregation is increasing then strip rotary so we have to grow the strips of maize soybean and oat the strip rotary to so tillage strip 4 to 8 inches wide and 2 to 4 inches deep is prepared by rotary tiller while the rest of the soil is left undisturbed the soil is conserved because of the crop residue between the tillage strips then crop residue following harvest leave crop residue on the field also allow decay and nutrient replacement so till planting this plowing technique sweep this crop residue into the area between the rows of crops soil density between this row remain relatively high because of the absence of tillage this soil is difficult for rain drop to detach and run off to move then chiseling so you can see here chiseling plow surface and no till surface then disking so you can see here so thank you very much if you have like my youtube <coughs> then um, don't forget to subscribe so thank you very much